Welcome to Magnifica TV News, dedicated to offering the news of the Church. Today is Wednesday, April 6, 2022, and these are our headlines. The Pope visited Malta over the weekend. Among other things, he said that the possibility of his trouble to Ukraine and Poland is being studied. The Vatican has published a document on Catholic education. It allows the bishops to intervene in schools so the teachers do not set a bad example. The Pope will preside at Eastern Date Mass in St. Peter's Square. It will be the first time after the interruption due to COVID pandemic. After the pandemic break, canonizations will return to the Vatican. It will be in May, and, among others, Blessed Charles de Foucault will be declared a saint. The crisis in Germany church is again in the news. While Cardinal Mars says the catechism can be doubt, the Bishop of Regisburn affirms the opposite. The Pope has launched harsh criticism of Putin, although he did not name him. During his visit to Malta, he said that the travel to Ukraine is under consideration. The Pontiff has visited Malta over the past weekend. The trip scheduled for May 31st, 2020 had to be delayed because of the health situation. A pilgrimage of less than 48 hours, brief but beautiful, as the pontiff himself said on the plane, were greeting the journalists of his entourage, he said that the idea of a trip to Kiev is a proposal on the table. In his speech to Maltese parliamentarians, the Pope referred to the situation in Ukraine. We used to think that invasions from other countries, brutal fighting in the streets, and atomic threats were dark memories of a distant past. But the icy wind of war, which brings only death, destruction, and hatred, has blown over the lives of many. In a clear reference to Vladimir Putin, although without quoting him, Francis pointed out, while once again some powerful person, sadly locked in the anachronistic pretensions of nationalistic interests, provokes and foments conflicts. Ordinary people are aware of the need to build a future that will either be together or it will not be. He again denounced the ideological colonization that goes against the right to life from the moment of conception or even before. He encouraged the Maltese parliamentarians to continue to defend life from the beginning to its natural end. He also had words to remember the drama of migrants and refugees. From the poor and populated south, multitudes of people are moving to the richer north. It is a fact that cannot be rejected with anachronistic closures. In this sense, he added that the expansion of the migratory emergency, let us think of the refugees from the murdered Ukraine, demands broad and shared responses. Only some countries cannot bear the entire problem, while others remain indifferent. The Mare Nostrum cannot become the largest cemetery in Europe. Bishops will be able to monitor Catholic schools to ensure the teachers do not give a witness with their lives that is contrary to the faith. The Congregation for Catholic Education has published the instruction The Identity of the Catholic School, the importance of dialogue between reason and faith, collaboration between school and family, and supervision by bishops are some of the issues addressed. In the first part of the document, it is emphasized that the educational action of the Church is not a philanthropic work, but an essential part of its evangelizing mission. 
The Catholic school is conceived as a community infused with the gospel spirit of freedom and charity, which forms and opens itself to solidarity. It is also said that students should receive a positive and prudent sexual education. The second part of the document is dedicated to the subjects responsible for the promotion and verification of Catholic identity. It underlines the importance of protecting its principles and values, even with the consequent punishment of transgressions and offenses, rigorously applying the norms of canon law and civil law. The document says that it is up to the school itself, following the doctrine of the Church, to interpret and establish the necessary parameters for the hiring of personnel, who must be distinguished by rectitude of doctrine and probity of life. If a person hired does not adhere to these principles, the school will have to take appropriate action, including expulsion. The instruction discusses the tasks of the bishop, who is responsible for the necessary discernment and recognition of educational institutions founded by the faithful, as well as the explicit written consent for the founding of Catholic schools. It is also his right and duty to see the application of the norms of universal law in Catholic educational establishments, to give them general provisions, to visit those in his diocese and territory at least every five years, and to take action in case of acts contrary to the doctrine, morals, or discipline of the Church. Among the bishop's duties is that of appointing or approving religious education teachers, as well as dismissing or requesting the dismissal of a teacher if the conditions for appointment are no longer met, always respecting the teacher's right of defense. <laughs> The Pope will preside at various liturgical offices during the Holy Week, among them the Easter Day Mass, which will again be in St. Peter's Square. Pope Francis will again pronounce the Orbi et Orbi blessing from the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica on Easter Sunday, April 17th. Prior to that, he will have presided at Holy Mass in the Square. After two exceptional years due to the pandemic, a bit of normality returns to the Vatican during Holy Week. According to the calendar published by the Prefecture of the Papal Household, Pope Francis will no longer celebrate the greatest feast of Christianity alone or in a small community. This will also bring back a highlight of Rome's Holy and Easter celebrations, the Stations of the Cross in the Colosseum on Good Friday, which used to be attended by thousands of people. On Palm Sunday, Francis intends to celebrate Mass in St. Peter's Square, and the Christian Mass with the consecration of the holy oils is also scheduled for Holy Thursday morning in St. Peter's Basilica. After a long pause due to the coronavirus, the Pope will elevate to St. Hood, then Blessed, it will take place in May 15, in a celebration in St. Peter's Square. Pope Francis plans to preside over a large canonization ceremony in St. Peter's Square in mid-May, for the first time in two and a half years after the pause forced by the COVID pandemic. The solemn mass for the canonization of the French priest, Trappist monk, and hermit Charles de Foucault, and nine other blessed, will take place on May 15th, at 10 a.m. in St. Peter's Square. In addition to Foucault, the Dutch Nazi opponent and religious Titus Bratima, the South Indian convert and martyr Lazarus, the foundress of the Congregation of the Sisters of the Presentation of Mary, Mary Riviere, and the foundress of the Congregation of the Capuchin Sisters of the Immaculate Conception of Lourdes, Maria de Jesus and Tucanale, will be canonized. Also to be declared saints will be Italian foundresses Maria Francesca di Gesù and Maria Domenica Mantovani, French priest and founder Cesar de Bus, as well as Italian priest and founders Luigi Maria Palazzolo and Justin Maria Russolillo. 
Francis has canonized more people in his pontificate than any other pope in the history of the church before him. It should be remembered that 800 of them, the martyrs of Otranto, were canonized at the same time in the largest canonization service in history in May 2013. The church in Germany remains divided. Cardinal Marx has said that the catechism can be doubted, and the Bishop of Regisburn accused him of following into rationalism. The German Cardinal Marx has affirmed that the catechism of the Catholic Church is not set in stone, and therefore one can doubt what it says. He is referring above all to Catholic sexual morality. The Cardinal spoke of the catechism in response to a question about how homosexual, queer or trans people are to be accommodated in Catholic teaching. The inclusive ethics we envision are not about being permissive, as some people claim. They are about respect for the other. The catechism is not set in stone. One can also doubt what it says. For his part, the Bishop of Regensburg, Bishop Wotherhauser, sees in the synodal way an attempt to dispute the bishop's authority to interpret revelation established in the magisterium. The teaching authority of the bishops is being replaced by the authority of a rationalistic German theology, he said. The bishop of Regensburg warns that the text approved by the synodal assembly represents a clear change of competencies when it says that the Episcopal Magisterium is not the final authority in detailed questions of exegesis or in questions of doubtful application. The importance of the Episcopal Magisterium as an authority of interpretation is thus disputed, Walderhauser notes. Thus, the right and duty of bishops to exercise their power of interpretation is also called into question when theologians interpret scripture contrary to the creed and the church. Our editorial this week is dedicated to commenting on the conditions to be met by Catholic schools. The Dicastery for Catholic Education has just published a document on the characteristics that Catholic schools should have, as well as those who work in them and those who in some way attend as students or the parents of those students. It is a good document. Of course, nothing is perfect, and perhaps it could have been a little more ambitious in some issues to have gone into some important topics. It is also true that it is influenced, as it could not be otherwise, by the fashions of the moment, but it is a good document. In this document, the first thing is that it puts Catholic education in relation to what is essential to it, Catholic education is part of the evangelizing mission of the Church, and every Catholic school or university should be seen in this perspective. The evangelizing mission of the Church in a Catholic school, the first thing has to be to evangelize. And from there, you have to see everything else. Logically, not only should they evangelize in religion class, of course, you have to teach mathematics or language, but the overall perspective has to be that of evangelization. And this, says the document, must be known. Also, the parents of the students and even the students themselves. There is a Catholic ideology in the school, and the parents who take their children to that school and the students who attend, who are old enough to make decisions, should know where they are going. You cannot take a child to a school just because there he will be treated with more discipline and he will be taught to study better. You take a child to a Catholic school because it is a Catholic school. There are more and more clashes between parents of students and sometimes between students and Catholic schools because when the latter want to apply the Catholic ideology of the school which parents know before taking them to that school, parents protest and even denounce. 
Although these clashes between parents and schools are unfortunately more and more frequent, however, the reasons for greater friction have occurred in recent years with teachers, with some teachers, especially with some teachers who teach the subject of religion, especially because their behavior, for example, being living as a couple without marrying in the church, sometimes because they cannot because they are homosexual couples and others, because even being heterosexual couples, they do not get married. Well, then, these cases that have occurred, I repeat, so far, they have only noticed religion teachers. These cases have generated a lot of trouble when the head of the school or the bishop has withdrawn permission for these people to give the subject of religion. The document insists that the educator has to be an educator also with his behavior, that you cannot teach one thing and with your behavior be saying the opposite of what you teach, if you teach the right thing. But on top of that, the document of the Dicastery for Catholic Education also adds that this Necessary coherence should not only be demanded to the religion teacher, but to all the teachers, to all the educators of that center. This is especially important because it gives the schools a moral backing to be able to demand from these teachers that which is linked to Catholic education. And the Vatican document goes a step further. It says that the bishops have the right and the duty to supervise that these teachers who work in Catholic schools lead a coherent life, at least in what is manifestly coherent with their faith. One of the best known cases in recent years was a confrontation between the Archbishop of Indianapolis in the United States with a Jesuit school located in his diocese, Brebeuf School. Well, in that school, one of the professors had contracted a civil marriage. It was a relatively public issue. It was not a private issue. He had contracted a civil marriage with another man. That other man, curiously, also worked in a Catholic school, in a different school. The Archbishop asked the Jesuit school not to renew this teacher's contract. He also asked the other school and they accepted. Well, the Jesuit school refused and then the Archbishop withdrew the denomination of Catholic. He said, you go ahead, but you are no longer a Catholic school. You can no longer say that you are a Catholic school. And he also prevented the two priests who worked in that school from celebrating Mass. He prevented them from celebrating Mass in some circumstances. They could continue to celebrate daily Mass, early Mass, but in circumstances of a more public and collective character for the school, he prohibited them from celebrating Mass. The Jesuits appealed to the Congregation for Catholic uh, Education. That was in 2019. Still, there is no sentence. I imagine, well, the congregation immediately, as there had been an appeal, suspended the bishop's uh, decree, which was therefore without effect. Well, there is still no response, there is still no conclusion to that trial on appeal. It is possible that now, after this document, there will be a response. At least I do not know that there has been such a response and I have been looking on the internet to see if it already existed. Since 2019, it has been more than two years. From now on, it is clear that the bishop has the right and the duty to intervene when the school does not do what it should do. Require their teachers to be consistent with their public life, not entering into their privacy, but with their public life, with what the school is going to teach with its Catholic ideology. Well, I think that with this document, some things will be clarified. I regret that the document had not gone further. 
that it had not gone a little more in depth because although the cases, like the one I just cited, of professors of religion or not, who lead a life publicly different or incoherent with the teachings of the church, although these cases exist and are very striking when they appear in the newsletters, fortunately, they are very infrequent. On the other hand, unfortunately, it is much more frequent that the religious teachings taught in these schools are not the teachings of the church. And this is not usually the responsibility of the laity, but is usually the responsibility of the owners of the schools, priests or religious. It should have been requested that not only the teachers should lead a life consistent with the faith, but also that the teaching given should be consistent with the doctrine of the church. I remember the letter that the Pope already Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, wrote to the presidents of all the Episcopal conferences of the world on the occasion of the meeting they had in Rome to deal with the issue of pederasty. In that very important, profound, lucid letter, Benedict XVI told them that as bishops, they had the duty not only to supervise and prevent the sexual abuse of minors, but he also told them that there is another type of abuse, perhaps not comparable to physical abuse, well, but there is another type of abuse, which is spiritual abuse. When those minors, and Pope Benedict also spoke of what was happening in homilies when adults went to Mass but didn't have sufficient formation when those minors were receiving as if it were church doctrine, something that was not. And he asked the bishops as defenders of the faith to take care of this and to prevent this abuse. Perhaps the document of the Congregation of Catholic Education about schools should also have emphasized this, that the religious teaching given in Catholic schools should always be faithful to the teaching of the Church, and could even have gone a little further and demanded that this coherence should also take place in the catechesis of the parishes, many of which are magnificent, but others, of course, not so much. And here are two questions. Why the evangelization failure of so many Catholic schools? It is a known fact that most of the students of those schools, after a certain age, no longer go to Mass. Just ask them, and we all know it, at least in the West. Why this failure? Is it not because they are not teaching the Catholic doctrine, but a substitute that is supposed to be more easily accepted by the students because it is not so demanding, but which in reality the students rejected? We should ask ourselves if this evangelizing failure is not a failure in other subjects, because education can be very good. But if this evangelizing failure is not related precisely to the lack of fidelity to the teaching of Christ, what is being rejected? The substitute or the original? Is in the substitute being rejected precisely because the original is not shown, even though the original is apparently more demanding, but in the end, is much more convincing. See you next week, God willing. If you wish to keep up to what is happening in the church, you can do so on our news page, www.magnifica.tv. See you next week, God willing.